the icons of evolution. The icons of evolution, these are examples uh, of textbook evidences that have taken on a life of their own. They go far beyond the truth, far beyond the facts, and have become symbols, in effect, of uh, Darwin's theory. Symbols that actually distort the scientific evidence. In many cases, they're called icons by Darwinian biologists themselves. Ernst Teckel was a, a German biologist and artist, a contemporary of uh, Darwin's, who, uh, among other things, made some famous drawings of vertebrate embryos, uh, fish, humans, salamanders, chicks, turtles, and so on. And in those drawings, Heckel tried to show that all these different vertebrates look very much the same as early embryos. Their early similarities showed that they came from a common ancestor, and differences arose only later. The problem is that he faked his drawings. The early vertebrate embryos don't really look that similar at all. The problem with Heckel's drawings wasn't just that they were inaccurate. They were actually false in many cases. Uh, but the real damage was done when these drawings entered into biology textbooks decades ago and they've never really been taken out. If you open a high school biology text now, or even a college biology text, you'll find these drawings, although they may not refer to them as Heckel's drawings, and in fact, they trace their ancestry directly to Heckel. You see the pictures of the embryos. And it's what really damaged our understanding of, of development and our understanding of biology in general. It's clear that, that Haeckel may have fudged his drawings somewhat to look more like his ideal than they actually are why the diagrams are reproduced is because they're um, easily available. Uh, there's no copyright on them. It's a, an easy way to, uh, to illustrate a point. And I would argue that the basic point that's being illustrated by those drawings is still accurate. But if you go back earlier in development, the different classes of vertebrates look even more different. According to Wells, Haeckel, in many modern textbooks, this leads students not just because of fake drawings, but because they leave out the earliest stages of embryonic development. What students are shown as the first stage of embryonic development is actually the mid-stage. And very few textbooks show those earliest stages, and yet that's the whole point. It's the earliest stages that are supposed to be the most similar, and they're not. Some textbooks actually use photographs of embryos, but they pick only that stage and those classes that happen to look most similar. And they omit the earlier stages and they omit those classes that don't look similar. So that to me is uh, picking the evidence very carefully to support the theory and that's not good science. Wells is a critic of Darwin's theory, but even staunch evolutionists like Harvard's Stephen Jay Gould have criticized the use of diagrams based on Hegel in textbooks. It is drawings by the German zoologist Ernst Haeckel from the uh, 1800s. He was a fanatical Darwinist. He was Darwin's disciple on the continent. He had a tremendous amount to do with the rapid acceptance of evolution in Germany, which had a lot to do. You can trace it very clearly. It's been done by scholars through the philosopher Nietzsche and his, his philosophy of the Superman, the strongest race and those sort of things. And that was, of course, taken on by Hitler and uh, the rest is pretty tragic history. But these were the drawings that he used to indoctrinate people into evolutionary thinking. He said they were taken from life. He looked at these things under the microscope and this is what he saw. This is the embryos of these very different creatures, fish, salamander, turtle, chicken, rabbit, human, at the same stage of embryonic development. And here's the take home message that our young people are supposed to get. The take home message is, hey, we're nothing really special. Look at the similarities. Isn't it obvious that we all evolved from a common designer? And at that stage, there's nothing much different you know, between us. And... But the tragic thing is that that is not how they look. Just a very few years ago, as we showed in Creation magazine, an evolutionary embryologist decided for the first time in well over a century that anybody decided to actually, actually go and photograph these creatures and see what they looked like, these uh, embryos. And that's the actual photos. Couldn't be more different, could they? You know, it is not too strong to refer to this as outright fraud. 
Heckel's drawings of embryos were known to be a fraud soon after they were published, culminating in 1915 with Heckel being charged with fraud by five professors and convicted by the university court as university. But we are still waiting for the textbooks and popular magazines to learn the news. But a new deception is starting to appear based on embryology. Evolutionists are starting to claim that even if the embryos don't look alike, certain structures are so similar that they must share a common ancestor. But this ignores that the initial stages of development follow very different patterns of cell division and become very different structures in mature organism. The following chart demonstrates how each organism's cell division and movement of the cells is very different, especially in the earliest stages of development. Each organism is unique and does not share a common ancestor. This chart is also an attachment to the email announcing this video. Don't forget, no matter what fraud is exposed or new evidence is found, some evolutionists will never admit that evolution is impossible. They will come up with a new angle, such as, yes, maybe it is fraud, but the basic point is still valid, to try to keep their theory alive. Their philosophy of life is dependent upon evolution being perceived as possible. For not all flesh is alike, but there is one kind for men, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. 1 Corinthians 15, 39.